Hello everyone, welcome to the Manta Trends webcast. My name is Ivy Lamb, and I'll be your host for today's event, Local Search, the new ways customers find your business. We're happy to have you with us today, and we hope you'll tweet about today's event using the hashtag Manta Trends. Before we dive in, I want to cover some important housekeeping items about the event. During the webinar, you should see a slide area, which will allow you to view the webinar. On top of the slide area are three tabs, Ask a Question, Attachments, and Rate This. Click on the Ask a Question tab to submit a question at any time during the webinar, and we'll do our best to respond during the Q&A at the end of the event. Under the Attachments tab, you'll find more resources related to today's topic. Of course, go to Rate This to leave us feedback on the presentation. If you're having technical difficulties, please email webinarhelp at manta.com. My colleague Graham is on hand answering your technical questions, so just send him a note. I'm excited to introduce our guest expert today, Ben Burns. Ben is responsible for building and managing Manta's strategy and day-to-day -day efforts of driving mobile and web customer acquisition through diverse external channels, including search. He has extensive SEO knowledge and is here to share how small business owners can leverage local search to help gain new customers. Quick overview of what we'll be covering today. We'll start with an industry update on Google's recent changes, talk about why it's important to target your local market with SEO, and then go over some practical tips that small teams can implement. Now I'll hand it over to you, Ben. Thank you so much, Ivy. So, as you mentioned, today is all about Google and SEO and the trends and insights that we've been um, analyzing um, over the past few months here. So let's jump into local search updates. Um, the Google 3-pack, um, which historically was known as the Google 7-pack, these results um, were tied to a search query that would display local companies that would append a phone number, address, and map icon to the right of it. So they removed four and left us with just three. Um, the three items that we've seen recently of how companies are making sure that they rank in these three packs, one, making sure that you have um, reviews. So reviews have become extremely important to make sure that you're ranking within the three pack. Um, two, making sure that your phone number and address is up to date and correct. And then four, ensuring that you have relevant backlinks pointing to your website. Those are the three characteristics that we've found that um, we find that companies are ranking within the three pack. Um, two, making sure that you have mobile friendly experience. That is key to ranking within the three pack. Um, three, removal of right rail ads. Google once again um, gave us less real estate to find our businesses. They removed all right hand ads and now added a fourth ad on top of the local results, moving local and organic results even further down the page. And they've also rolled out this on desktop. So now desktop and mobile um, mirror each other as far as the result. So those are four very impactful items that recently rolled out from Google. Organic search return on investment. Again, building organic search traffic takes time. It's not a light switch that you can easily turn on and off, but in the long term, it is a very um, high return investment vehicle. Typically, if you have a net new site, it can take anywhere between three to six months to see the actual return. If you currently have a website that is live and launched, there, um, there's really no other channel that can bring you such um, long-term success than um, integrating um, SEO into your website. One of the main things that we've seen over the years, actually, is making sure that um, your business is listed within multiple directories. Um, what we find is that Google um, is is not only ranking sites that have um, multiple relevant links to them, but websites are out there scraping um, your website and 
you know, when they scrape your website, they could scrape content that may be out of date. So there are multiple websites, um, multiple directory sites out there that you'd want to audit and make sure that they, they have the latest, most relevant content, especially around the hours of operation and your address. So if your hours of operation change um, in the spring versus winter time, you'd want to make sure that's reflected on your website. And you also want to audit the sites that automatically scrape your website and add them to your directory um, sites. So it's very critical. And there are multiple tools um, that will allow you to audit those sites that have scraped your website um, so that you can go ahead and update it. Um, speaking of around hours of operation, um, typically you'd want to place those within the Contact Us page of your website, but more importantly, you want to make sure that that content is, um, is, is apparent to Google on all pages. So typically, we advise companies to layer in the hours of operation within the footer of your website. That's the best place to list this um, because it's apparent, it's very easy to index and crawl. Mobile-friendly websites. Again, mobile um, is no longer the future. It is now. Um, and the three characteristics when looking at a mobile-friendly website is a responsive design. Um, it is very easy in today's world um, to find mobile responsive templates. Um, and so if you currently have a website that has been you know, built or designed possibly the last five years, it may not be mobile responsive. So, you know, we advise um, either speaking to a specialist that can help you transition a older static website into mobile responsive site, and or if you're looking to um, go through refresh, whoever you're speaking to um, that's in charge of a redesign, make sure that they're going to build your website with responsive in mind and always avoid flash. Um, this is a technology that um, isn't used that often anymore. Um, both Google and Bing um, have difficulty time in understanding the code behind flash, and then that will have a direct impact on your rankings. So at all costs, especially when transition to mobile, the removal of any flash code um, will definitely um, benefit your ranking for your company. And also, thirdly, allow space between buttons and links. Um, you could test this by just going to your current website on mobile and navigating it as any customer may, and just see when you're using your thumb to click through your website, whether it's contact us page or call now, making sure those links um, have enough space. And don't just use your hand, um, use f friends and family. Um, because it's a very diverse group out there, and it's very important that you're navigating that end user to that specific page that they were intended for. When speaking about SEO, content is king, it will remain king. And the three assets that you um, have control over um, are the most important, and they're the most unique to your company. So the About Us page is very critical because typically it's 100% unique content tied to your service um, offering and years of experience. The helpful um, FAQ pages, um, typically this is your page that is an evergreen and ever-growing page. We advise customers to um, always look to include new FAQs on the page. Typically, this can come from either a phone call or possibly an email of a question from a current customer that you can then add to the site. So that page is always relevant, it's fresh, it's updated content, and Google and most search engines love fresh, updated content. Um, also, service pages. Typically, you want to list out individual service offerings as a net new page. We see, we find that um, those sites out there tend to rank higher if you have, let's say, 10 service um, offerings and each page speaks to that specific offering, opposed to layering all 10 on one page. Video, again, uh, more and more people 
are opting to watch video more than they are to read content. So um, grab your GoPro or your iPhone, make sure the quality is still consistent with your overall theme, of course, but um, there are many ways to record video now, and more and more people are learning about customers and offerings via video, and this can be a how-to as well. Great, thank you so much, Ben, for those uh, hands-on tips. Now we're gonna open things up for the Q&A. Um, just as a reminder, everyone, you can submit a question anytime by clicking on the Ask a Question tab. Um, we already have quite a few coming in from the audience. One person asks, I have a home-based business, so I don't want to post my address and my hours are by appointment only. Any suggestions as to how to handle that? Sure, so if you, you don't want to have hours of operation um, or your actual private address, we have seen individuals use PO boxes um, as a virtual address. I will say that they tend not to rank as well if you use an actual address that's tied to um, um, a location, to be honest with you. And then hours of operation, um, you could avoid them, but you should have an option within directory sites that um, open or close. And I guess for those that don't want to list hours by day is just to leave that open. Great, thanks. So, a related question, what if you have more than one location with different hours? Sure, that's fine. Um, so, if you have multiple locations with different hours, typically you're able to create multiple um, location listings. So, per listing, you'd want to append those hours that are tied to that address. Um, if you have one website that lists out all locations, then of course you have the flexibility to probably um, highlight hours that are tied to that specific location. For those with multiple companies, it's, I urge it's more important to make sure that you can audit all those directory sites that, um, that may list inaccurate hours across your company. So really using a tool that will be able to audit quickly and verify what information is tied to that specific location. Great. Um, we have another question from an audience member, wondering if you could just uh, give a few examples of those direct directories that these companies need to make sure are updated. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, of course, um, at Manta, we tend to make sure that our content is live and updated. But the other um, main ones in the industry, there's Google My Business. Um, obviously, it's with Google, so you want to make sure that um, information is updated and correct. Yahoo Directory, Yelp, Dex Media, Local.com. I think those are probably the um, one of the more powerful um, directories that have a lot of domain authority that would have an impact in your ranking. Great, thanks, Ben. Uh, one more question. I think we have time for: uh, Have Google AdWords disappeared? or are they the ads at the top? Sure, sure, of course. So Google is in the business of making as much money as possible. So the ads are live. They removed them only from the right rail and added a fourth ad above organic listings. So you should see now on your mobile phone and desktop four paid ads above organic listings, and then you should see anywhere between two to three ads below the fold. So those are live, and they will continue to stay live um, for the foreseeable future. Great. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today, Ben, and sharing your advice. It's time for us to wrap up. But if you'd like to revisit any portion of this webinar, it will be available for on-demand viewing within 24 hours on Manta's website. Be sure to check out our other webinars, which are linked in the attachments. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation, and thank you, everyone, for attending.